All right, so let's get into the Christian understanding of tithes and offering. Now, the Christian understanding is a bit easier to break down. It's really, in fact, it's really simple to break down, and uh, I'm going to do that real briefly. Um, you guys see, I got, uh, what's his face? I forgot his name, Leroy something. Uh, one of Creflo Dollar's homeboys up there is this picture, this clown. Dancing all over the money, man. Shake my head. Alright, let's get into it. Christian understanding of tithing. So let's go to the scripture that Christians run to to say that we're supposed to tithe. Malachi 3 and 8. Try my passports. Will a man rob God? Yeah, you have robbed me. But you say, when have you robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Will a man rob God? That's how the Christian parents be sounding like. Will a man rob God? Okay. So, real big issue about this scripture. This isn't talking about the congregation or the members. You gotta understand everything the Most High says he has an audience. We can't be twisting scripture to say, oh, this applies to you or this applies to you. Can't be doing it no more. So, when the Most High was talking right here, he had a certain audience. So let's go a little bit before this verse in the book of Malachi. We're going to go to Malachi 2 and 1. And it says this. And now, O ye priest, this commandment is for you. So this commandment is for the priests. So exactly who were the priests? Let's go to the law. Like I said, screen, screen everything to the law earlier in this lesson. Deuteronomy 18 and 1. The priests, the Levites, and all the tribe of Levi shall have no part no inheritance with Israel. They shall eat the offerings of the Lord made by fire and his inheritance. So right here it tells you that the Levitical priests are the ones who the Most High address this book to. So it has nothing to do with your pastor or minister or whatever title you want to give him. He's pushing false doctrine. And nine times out of ten, these people... Do not push the law of Moses. And this is the only law out of the Old Testament that the mainstream Christian church really upholds. Because this is where they make their income. Through tithes and offering. Or their application of tithes and offerings. Really robbing the people. It's not robbing the most high. So that's uh, one scripture that they use. So let's go to another one in the New Testament they use. And I, I even had this one pulled on me. First uh, Corinthians 16 and 1. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. So, average Christian pastor would be like, you see that? The collection of the saints. What's that? That's the collection plate for tithes and offering. Okay, nice try. It's, it's funny that you would say that, but that's not talking about that. So, this collection of the saints, we have to actually get understanding in by going to the Greek lexicon. So, let's go to the Thy Greek Concordance for the word collection. Greek word 3048. Logia. Thy definition. A collection. 1A. Of money gathered for the relief of the poor. So, you see the difference between the tide that they try to push and what the collection actually is, it's money gathered for relief of the poor. So why would the apostles, aka the early Christians, gather money for relief of the poor? They were practicing what the Bible calls pure religion. They were taking care of those who were less fortunate and looking out for those who were without, like the fatherless, the widows, and the homeless. That's what they were using that money for, not to sustain a church building or get income from uh, being a pastor. It has nothing to do with that. They were practicing pure religion. That's what the scripture says about pure religion. James 1.27 Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So how do you visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction? You help them out. You spend time with them. You spend 
funds for them. Okay, I know this widow. She has kids and she doesn't she doesn't have proper income. Her husband's dead. Okay, let's gather some money to make sure that they got food for this week. That's pure religion according to the description. A lot of people have gotten away from that. And this is a principle that I exhort everybody to try to uh, really uh, follow because this really has uh, much to deal with your salvation. And I'm talking to you, I'm talking to myself as well. Let's get another scripture dealing with pure religion. Isaiah 1 and 17. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. So you see they had the exact same principles and helping out those without. So that's what the collection of the saints is for. So the Christian doctrine of paying tithes and offering is now debunked. If you're a Christian and you're watching this video, please stop paying tithes. Do not pay any more money unless you're dealing with this pure religion to anybody, any official of your church. Use your money for sustaining yourself and those that are without. Alright, now, let's move on to the Hebrew-Israelite church camp understanding of tithing. We're going to go to the scriptures that they use to say that we're supposed to be tithing right now. So we're going to go to the main scripture that they use to support tithing. Hebrews 5 and 5. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son. Today I have begotten thee. Verse 6, as he said also in another place, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So this is the one that most Hebrews run to to support tithes and offering. They said uh, Christ is a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. If you guys remember that Melchizedek was the priest and king of the Most High that met Abraham after his slaughter during the Middle Eastern War in Genesis 14. And Abraham paid tithes to him. So since we're descendants of Abraham and Christ is in the order of Melchizedek, we are allegedly supposed to pay tithes to our Hebrew Israelite elders. So that's that's one scripture they use to say we're supposed to be tithing. So let's get another set in the same book. Hebrews 7 and 1. This goes a little bit more in detail about Melchizedek. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abram from returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, a body of the priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi, who received the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they can't, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. Verse 6, But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham, and blessed him that had the promises without all contradiction the less is blessed of the better. And here men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them, of whom it is witness that he liveth. And as I may so say, Levi also who receiveth tithes paid tithes in Abraham, for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. If therefore a perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? Okay, so now this is where the Israelite churches missed the mark. So let's continue reading. For the priesthood being changed, there is also made a necessity of change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. But it's evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, out of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident, for after, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek there arises another priest, who was made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testified, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. But there, 
is a verily a disannulling of the commandment going before the weakness and a profitableness thereof. Okay, so right here saying there's a disannulling of the commandment going before the weakness and a profitableness thereof. So what understanding can the scriptures give on this? Let's get a precept. Malachi chapter 2 verse 8. And it says, But ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, said the Lord of hosts. Therefore have I also made you contemptible and base before all the people, according as ye have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. So Christ came to change the order, change the law, because those who were had the uh, priesthood, they didn't follow the law. They disregarded the law of the Most High. So they, in their carnalness, the Most High removed them out of their office. And now we have Christ, who is also king and priest. That's the order of Melchizedek. See, most Israelites like to use the fact that he was king and priest, and Abraham paid tithes to him. They don't understand that Abraham paid tithes to Abra to uh, Melchizedek before the law was given. And so since Christ came and atoned for us and atoned for the transgressions of these people, he's now the high priest. And now there's no need for a sacrifice because they stumble out of the way of the law. So no more sacrifices are needed. Therefore, there's no more need for a tithe. Ties and offering are not instituted under the priesthood of Christ. Let's get some understanding. First, we're going to go back to Hebrews chapter 7, verse 19. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the, by the which we draw nigh to God. And inasmuch as not without an oath, he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, the Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Christ made surety of a better testament. And they were truly were many priests, because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continued forever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needed not daily, as those high priests, to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins, and then for the people's. For this he did once, when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests, which have infirmity, but the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the son, who was consecrated, forevermore. Simple and plain. No more need for a sacrifice now that Christ has come. So if there's no more sacrificing, your tithes and offerings which you sacrificed are no longer required. So everybody that is teaching the doctrine of tithes and offering outside the land of Israel need to sit down and relearn the law of the Most High. Hebrews 5 and 12. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. So all of you Christian pastors, you Israelite elders who collect tithes and offering, all y'all need to have a seat and relearn these oracles of God. And you also need to quit taking money from your congregation that they could be using to better themselves and sustain themselves in the land of their captivity. Stop pushing this tithes and offering doctrine. You cannot collect tithes from your congregation. Number two, none of y'all are Levites and y'all can't prove your Levitical heritage. Number three, none of y'all are Christ ultimately. And Christ's priesthood does not require tithes. So you need to sit down and learn we learn these oracles of God, which is the law. So all of these, all of y'all collecting tithes against the scripture, you know what y'all doing? 
serving him your own way. And that's the problem Israel has been having ever since we got led up out of our captivity in Egypt. That's why the law says this, Deuteronomy 12 and 8. You shall not do after all the things that we do here this day. Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. So if you think that people should be tired and what the law says differently, guess what the Most High said? Time out for that. You serving the Most High your own way was done in a way with during the time of Moses. He has an order for us to live by. And if you're not following that, that order, as best as you can, guess what? You're transgressing. And you're transgressing willfully if you keep this ordinance outside the land. So we need to serve the Most High according to His righteousness. So let's get some understanding on that. Romans 10 and 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So that's what you need to do Israel. Submit yourselves to the righteousness of God. And it starts with keeping the law according to how we're supposed to keep it. If we're not in the land of Israel, do not do the ordinances that are for the land of Israel. So that requires that all those ordinances deal with the ceremonial sacrifice aspect of the law. The moral laws are A1. Keep those everywhere. Dietary laws, A1. Keep those everywhere. But the ceremonial laws you cannot keep outside the land of Israel. And it says this in the scriptures. It says this in the Bible dictionaries. And our forefathers knew this and they understood this. So we, in the last days, real closer, way closer to the time of Christ's return than our forefathers is, we need to get it together. We hope you have received understanding and edification in the spirit of the Most High and the Messiah. If y'all have any rebuttal to this or y'all disagree with this video, please hit us up. Because we are striving to get right in the knowledge of this Bible, the knowledge of the Word of the Most High. With that being said, I want to say shalom and blessings to y'all. Y'all keep striving for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding the Most High's Holy Word. Uh, hit us, hit us up if you have any questions or disagreements or need further clarification. Excuse me. Shalom.